then we want to discuss the emerging market exposure generally, as already mentioned at the beginning, um, how important are emerging markets for, for you and your clients? Is the emerging market exposure um, or was the emerging markets exposure or more added to the to the exposure through the last months or years maybe? And um, we'll start with, with Patrick Maurenwäscher, kind of from, from your perspective, how important is um, the emerging markets exposure for, for your clients and is, is it getting more and more important through the last months or years? Well, it's it's definitely been been growing. Um, I mean, we we started looking for managers uh, to to invest in these areas about, I would say, five years ago. Because uh, actually, exactly what you said, Raj, um, we we don't believe that it's a very good idea to um, to do broad indices in uh, emerging markets. You have to go with a concentrated portfolio. And then the big question is, I mean, emerging markets, that is su such a broad term. Um, I mean, how is the portfolio going to be constructed? So um, we, we had a kind of a hard time looking for managers who can actually do this. And then, I mean, I think uh, uh, what you, uh, Mr. Ran said um, to, to look for India and, and China is something that we did as well. Um, and then um, to, to have managers that come with a Vietnam portfolio, for example, we, we did not do that because that was, for, for our taste, it was too specific and, and uh, too dependent on the macro view on the country Vietnam. So we tried to stick with the, with the broad countries or the, the large markets. And then um, we, we looked for individual stock pickers and then, um, but I, I suppose in, in this round here, we would be a contrarian because uh, the portfolios that we like are portfolios of 10 to 15 stocks. So you guys will probably think that is really concentrated, but at the same time, um, most people say with a 30 stock portfolio that is concentrated, which I would disagree with. Um, so I'm interested, Raj, uh, about your view on, on, on how, how you construct a portfolio uh, country-wise but also size-wise? Um, firstly, I think to refer to this issue about um, the countries and particularly India and China versus the rest, of course, with 1.3 billion people uh, in each country, you know, these are the big behemoths, the big giants of the emerging markets. But the reason why we think we, we, we look at emerging markets as a whole, rather than focusing only on those two or just on Asia, is that you know, there are important differences because what we're interested in is profits growth as investors. And so you know, if you think about a great new uh, innovative idea in India or China, if it's not really strongly protected, there will be, you know, before the end of that month, if it gets shown to work and it's really innovative, the competition is fierce. There will be two, three other players coming in hot on your tail in China or in India uh, you know, before the month is out. It's, it, these are very competitive markets in many ways. If you have a really innovative idea in Latin America, you may have a lead time of many quarters, maybe even a couple of years before the competition really catches on and tries to replicate what you're doing and compete with you. So there are good reasons, you know, even if uh, Latin America may not feel as innovative as parts of uh, Asia and India and China in, part in particular, you know, in some ways, a good business model, a good innovation uh, can be much more profitable for the company that's doing it than, than in India or China, where the competition jumps in pretty quickly. Two other quick points to make. We actually work with uh, about 40 stocks, uh, so between in a range of 35 to 45 stocks. And the reason why we regard that as being concentrated, but, you know, balanced is because that we feel and the evidence uh, to us suggests gives us enough diversity of investment drivers. So we don't really spend much time worrying about which country a company is listed in or the sector, but we spend a lot of time looking at the correlations of these companies to one another. And what we really want is the 40 or so best growth companies in the whole of the emerging markets anywhere in the world. And we want them to be completely independent of each other and the market. Now we all know uh, and everyone watching will know that that's absolutely impossible to have zero correlation to each other or the market. 
But the closer we can get to that, the happier with our, we are with our portfolio. I know that um, your Gran, you've added more China exposure through the last years, um, allocating via funds and, um, and stocks directly. How important is the, the um, emerging market exposure generally for, for your clients? And do you think there's still more space to or more to add to this exposure to the next years? Yeah, it's actually quite quite important. It's um, it's not the largest uh, part of our um, stock portfolio. Um, I think the U.S. is leading, and, and then Europe, and then emerging markets, but it's it's not very far away. So it's it's an important part. And um, actually, um, yeah, in China we are quite happy. Um, we we do have a concentrated portfolio there, so it's 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 um, it's working out at the moment. It's fine. Um, we prefer this countrywide uh, approach, as Mr. Maurenbrecher said as well. So we're still looking for India. It's not, not easy to find very good managers. I agree with him as well, um, who outperform, who really get, make offer on in a long-term view. But um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's worth it, I think, uh, going there and, and going for special markets because it, it needs, takes a lot of um, research to, to pick the right um, um, stocks. And um, of course, um, if you look at uh, companies that have a strong growth, like um, Raj said, um, there's always the risk that these companies at one stage disappoint. So I, I wonder how he tries to avoid that uh, issue. Mm. You talk definitely about this. And first, for um is it crucial to get growth for your portfolio that you have to invest in countries, of course, growing, which are probably more in the emerging markets? Um, and that you kind of generated growth via investments in emerging markets? Yes, yes, of course. Um, for, for us, emerging market equities take a, take a more and more important role within our strategic asset allocation. Since so we have a core satellite uh, um, um, system, which we are working with, and, and uh, when we look to, to long-term economic growth perspectives, um, we have to be invested in, in emerging markets. And, and I think during the last years, um, one part of, of the emerging strat strategy for some investors was investing in developed market equities with high exposure to, to emerging market countries. And yeah, maybe, maybe you can call it home buys, but I think that is gone. Um, for long-term investors and family office clients, our clients are definitely long-term, um, have a long-term investment horizon. It is uh, very important to participate on the, on the long-term GDP growth in, in the emerging markets. And uh, therefore um, emerging market is, is becoming more and more important for our clients. So everyone added more exposure to their emerging market side. Very happy to have you, Marcel Miller. You have reduced your emerging market exposure through the last um, year or months. Yeah, I mean, I would not say reduced. We we rebalanced some some kind of uh, uh, little overexposure we had relative to benchmark. Basically, we we kept our uh, emerging market exposure quite stable uh, over the last uh, five years. I would say the reason that that we are not so bullish on, on emerging market is basically that that we see some corporate governance issues there. Um, dividend politics uh, are a little bit in some countries uh, quite difficult, like Korea. Um, it's it's uh, so there are some issues. Uh, earnings growth uh, was also a topic here in the round. Uh, so it's it's below uh, the other regions. So, so that's also the reason why we see some kind of underperformance of that of that market. With regards how we implement that, we we have a kind of different approach to that because what we observed over the last five to ten years that the dispersion of country returns in emerging markets is quite high. And that's the reason why everybody uh, wants to bet on countries. And that's what we also observe in a lot of mutual funds which are playing in that peer group. But the point is only a few get it right. The most of them get it wrong because it's so difficult because the dispersion is quickly turning around. You have one year where one country is minus 10% and the other country is plus 10%. And to get it right each year and on a systematic, repeatable way is really difficult. And that's the reason why we basically said we want to have a neutral, more or less neutral approach on the, on the countryside. And we want to have somebody who is good in picking the right companies in each country and each sector. So, Raj, where do you find growth? 
I, we think growth moves around. It moves around the world, it moves around from sectors, and it's usually more specifically driven by innovation. And then, you know, just one last thing in terms of, is there a risk with growth stocks in emerging markets? What happens if they disappoint? For sure, if you hold a growth stock into a disappointment, uh, you can get earnings downgrades and you can get multiple compression. But over the last few years, if you look at the top 20% or the top 40% growers in emerging markets, you know, it keeps up pretty respectably uh, with the US and outpaces the fastest growers in Europe, outpaces the fastest growers in Japan, outpaces the fastest growers in many other parts of the world. We are taking the view that, you know, the, the best business models can come from anywhere and often, you know, they'll come from less dynamic countries. But, you know, if the business model is, is really innovative, they can generate great returns for a considerable period of time. So we, we, we take, I would take the other side of that argument that I would say that looking at countries puts an artificial limit on your horizons and your options. You know, really better to look at, across a broader range of countries that are, you know, my definition of emerging markets is that these are countries that are getting richer over time, as simple as that. And that's what presents the growth opportunities if there are enough innovative businesses around. Mm -hmm.